over the world, the heavy-booted men are marching to their battle stations as 1941 spreads the tentacles of war farther and farther out from weary Europe. Under the Southern Cross, they gather smiling, fresh in mind and body, ready to prove that even the farthest corner of the democratic world hates tyranny. With jokes on their lips and laughter in their eyes, they go to face the toughest job men ever faced since greed and hate made war upon right thinking. This handful of people, this little army from a little nation, this tiny splash of color on the map of a world at war, these sturdy people, these women that wave goodbye, these men that go, these girls and boys and men and women, these are New Zealand, firm in the hand clasp, determined in their parting that it shall not this time be in vain. The ships come and sail again to unknown ports, crowded with men, cheering as they go. A moment ago, hands could reach out and touch. Now the gap of water widens, and soon when the ship's wake dies around the harbor, only the memory of an arm waved gaily or a shouted greeting will remain. Strange and unreal it seems that the northern world should spin so madly into a third year of flames and high explosive, blood and tears, while here the seasons follow much as usual. Strange that the young men should leave their work and homes behind, the clear New Zealand sky, and go adventuring on unknown voyages to unknown countries. Strange that any men or any women, any flesh and blood in any country, should boil the witch's pot that brews dictatorship and the mad ambitions of a Hitler. But madness grows out of challenge to sanity, and sanity must go back to clear the path before it can go on again. Proudly they go to their task, and proudly we send them. Thank you.